Welcome to Rate Your Pain 1 to 10. My name is Jack, and today we're going to be covering the pain scale. I'm guessing that most of you have probably figured out where I came up with my YouTube channel name by now. It is referring to the pain scale the doctors use when rating a patient's level of pain. Or, more specifically, the phrase they use when asking, Please rate your pain 1 to 10. Before we get started on the pain scale, though, I just want to mention real quick that today, August 7th, is my 7th anniversary of my motorcycle accident. So, happy birthday to my RSD. There are many pain scales out there today that basically all work in a similar manner. Some are created to be more patient friendly, such as the Wong Baker scale, which is simple by design and easily defines each level of pain. While other ones like the McGill pain scale are more complex and geared towards physicians and patients with more serious conditions. The two main pain scales which are most commonly used, or at least in my experience and from what I've heard from others, are the Wong Baker pain scale and the Stanford pain scale. I will be giving the definitions of each level of pain according to the Stanford pain scale, as well as I'll be showing each of the five faces in the Wong Baker pain scale as we go along. Both scales are rated 0 through 10, 0 meaning no pain at all, and 10 being the worst possible pain you could ever experience. As I mentioned before, there are five faces in the Wong Baker scale to help depict each level of pain for those who are more visual rather than rating by numbers. In the Stanford Pain Scale, levels 1 through 10 are broken into three different categories, minor, moderate, and severe. Levels 1 to 3 are in the green zone and considered to be minor or mild pain while levels 4 through 6 are in the yellow zone and considered moderate pain. Levels 7 through 10 are in the red zone and deemed as severe pain. Let's break them all down one by one and face by face, starting with the green zone, aka minor pain. We're going to completely skip past level 0 because as I mentioned before, 0 means absolutely no pain at all, so I think that's a pretty obvious one. Alright, let's get started with number 1. Number one, very mild. According to the Sanford pain scale, this is very light and barely noticeable pain, like a mosquito bite or a poison ivy itch. Most of the time, you never even really think about the pain. Number two, discomforting. This is minor pain that is similar to pinching the fold of skin between your thumb and index finger with your other hand and using your fingernails. However, some people react differently to this test. It's important to note that everybody has a different level of pain tolerance. What hurts for most may not hurt for some, and vice versa. Number three, tolerable. This is very noticeable pain, such as a doctor giving you an injection or inserting an IV. It can also be an accidental cut or blow to the nose, causing a bloody nose. I know that last example might seem like it's a little bit off for this level of pain, but if you really think about it, that type of pain experienced in your nose is more uncomfortable and more of like a stinging pain than it truly is painful. On to the yellow zone, the moderate levels of pain. This is where the real pain begins. Number four, distressing. This is a strong deep pain like an average toothache. It is so strong that you notice the pain all the time and you cannot completely adapt to it. Another example is the initial pain from a bee sting or minor trauma to part of the body, such as when you stub your toe really hard. This pain level can be simulated by performing the same test we did before, where we pinch the fold of skin between our thumb and index finger with our other hand using our fingernails, except this time squeeze a little bit harder. Notice how the pain is piercing at first, but then becomes more dull afterwards. Number five, very distressing. This is strong, deep, piercing pain, such as a sprained ankle when you stand on it wrong, or mild back pain. Not only do you notice the pain all the time, you are now so preoccupied with managing it that your normal lifestyle is curtailed. Temporary personality disorders are also frequent, meaning you'll be more prone to mood swings, irritability, and a short temper. Number six, intense. Comparable to a bad non-migraine headache, combined with several bee stings, or bad back pain. This is strong, deep, piercing pain. So strong, it seems to partially dominate your senses, causing you to think somewhat unclearly. 
At this point, you begin to have trouble holding a job or maintaining normal social relationships. This would probably be the lower end of the scale for CRPS pain. Most of us have a hard time maintaining jobs if we can even keep one, and relationships seem to dwindle fast when you have CRPS. I always say that it weeds out your true friends from your so-called friends. This is a very hard thing to experience because we like to believe that we have a lot of friends in life, and maybe we do, but in the end, the number of real friends who will stay by your side no matter what are few and far between. All right, it's time to get serious here with our final category sitting in the dreaded red zone, Severe, where the pain gets real. Number seven, very intense. Comparable to an average migraine headache. Same as number six, except the pain completely dominates your senses, causing you to think unclearly about half the time. At this point, you are effectively disabled and frequently cannot live alone. This is about where my average pain level is at most of the time, I'd say. Living alone for me would definitely prove to be difficult because of basic household chores that need to be done on the regular. Just that alone is enough to lay me out for days at a time, if not worse. I try my best to help out when I can, but unfortunately my wife has to pick up most of the slack around the house. Thankfully, she's an amazing woman who understands my condition. However, she's still human and only one person. I know this can be overwhelming for her at times, so I do my best to help when I can, but it still makes me feel like crap knowing I can't do my full part. Number eight, utterly horrible. Comparable to childbirth or real bad migraine headache. Pain is so intense that you can no longer think clearly at all and have often undergone severe personality change if the pain has been present for a long time. I definitely know that for myself, I have changed personality wise. I've become more closed off to the world and you know, I, you wouldn't think so considering here I am on YouTube, but I just don't go out like I used to. I don't socialize like I used to. And I don't seem to trust many people in the world much anymore either. It is very true that long-term pain at this level can really change the way you think and who you are altogether. Just like soldiers who fight in wars, and inmates who get locked up in jail or prison for a long period of time. It changes you inside and out. Also, suicide is frequently contemplated and sometimes attempted when pain is at this level for a long time. My specific disease, RSD or CRPS, has been given the nickname the suicide disease because pain is often so unbearable that patients feel this is the only viable option to pain relief. As I've mentioned in my other videos, there is no cure for CRPS, and when you feel like you're on fire that is never ending, it can get very tiring to where any option sounds like a good option. I'm not saying that that is the case for myself, but there have been many times in the past where the pain was so bad and so unbearable that I did wish I would just die. I have asked almost every single doctor I've seen if an amputation is possible. I won't get into that whole story right now. But if I can get rid of my left leg today and receive a prosthetic, I would do it in a heartbeat. This leg is just a burden to me. It gets in the way, not to mention the excruciating pain that I feel on the regular. To some, this may sound crazy. It may sound desperate, but that's just the true nature of this type of pain. Number nine, excruciatingly unbearable. Comparable to throat cancer. Pain is so intense you cannot tolerate it and demand painkillers or surgery no matter what the risk or side effects may be. If that doesn't work, suicide is frequent since there is no more joy in life whatsoever. And like we were talking about number 8, maybe I wasn't demanding an amputation, but I sure was asking for it left and right, and when the doctors were warning me that it could make my RSD spread or get worse, I wasn't listening and I didn't care what they had to say about that. I wanted my leg gone, and that's just all that was on my mind for the time being. Number 10, unimaginable, unspeakable. Pain is so intense that you'll go unconscious shortly. Most people have never experienced this level of pain. Those who have suffered a severe accident, such as a crushed hand, lost consciousness as a result of pain and not the blood loss, have experienced a level 10 pain. When I got into my motorcycle accident, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the video about it or not, but that instant that my bone snapped, I did black out for a brief moment. I wouldn't say I fully passed out per se, but just blacked out for that quick brief moment when the bone actually broke off. Because the next thing I remember is sliding across the road. I don't remember hitting the road or the impact of it. I just remember hearing my helmet scraping and feeling the vibrations of it. 
That's when shock set in, of course, and helped me cope with the pain the rest of the way. The body works in amazing ways when we're beyond our normal mental and or physical capacity. We are definitely the most fascinating machines ever created by far. Here's an important side note or piece of advice for you when your doctor asks you what your pain level is. Do not exaggerate your pain level by giving a number that is higher than the actual scale's max number. For example, if we are using the standard 1 to 10 scale, don't say 11 or 12 because 10 is already the worst imaginable pain there is. Basically, you're already knocking on death's door if you're at a 10. So when you say a number like 11, when they just said 1 through 10, the doctor isn't going to take you seriously as he or she thinks you are prone to exaggeration. So really think about where your pain lies and answer correctly. Anyways, there you have it folks, the pain scale. Hopefully the next time your doctor asks you to give your pain rating, this video will help you to provide a more accurate answer for them. What level do you rate your pain? Make sure to tell us in the comments below. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to be alerted as soon as my next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching folks and see you next time. Peace.